now and uh, let me fire this up. All right, here we go. I'll have to, uh, we'll have to rely on people in the chat to let us know if our voices are coming out okay. I think mine is, and I believe yours is fine too. Hello. Oh. Awesome, great. Slash, Matthew, Matt. Good to see everybody. So, uh, we are going to, I am here with Ed, a.k.a. Space Invader 1, who we've done a podcast together, we've done a, a couple actually at this point, and the goal of today is to run Windows 98 in a VM using Unraid so that you could access it from other browsers. There are some logistics issues that we're going to run into that Ed's going to help with, um, and I also have a CRT hooked up to my PC, a VGA monitor, which we're going to drop that into the... Um, uh, that's basically what you're seeing right now. So that's the full desktop capture. I'll show a video of it once we get it all up and running. Uh, but the first thing that we would want to do is go in and double check all of my Unraid stuff. And for anybody who's joining and needs to drop out, I'll timestamp it so you could skip through it. Uh, but while the process that we're going to be working on is fairly easy, thanks to Ed's very simple installer, um, just doing some prep work to make sure all your stuff's okay is always a good idea. Um, and I guess the first thing I'll ask you, Ed, is, is it safe to upgrade? Do we do anything before we upgrade the Unraid OS? Is there <clears throat> backups that we have to do? Because I think there was one update a year ago that kind of caused problems for people, right? Mm. Yeah, it's always best to back up your flash drive before you do an update, um, just in case something goes wrong you, is you never there a way know to do but that you... through the unraid interface or do i have to physically power down it sure is yeah so okay oops i thought i was controlling it so yeah if you click on to the main tab okay and then scroll down to where it says flash and click on the word flash okay and just hit there flash backup there's another little nice plugin as well, Bob, that you can install maybe sometime. It's called Unraid Connect. And what it will do is it will actually manage your license keys, back up your license keys. And every time you make a change to the flash backup, it uploads it to, um, to the Lime Tech Cloud, which is tied with your forum login. So if anything go wrong with the flash drive, it allows you to easily restore. And if you get a new flash drive, you can easily swap the license over. So I believe I had to do that one other time, swap the license, and it was not a painful I remember, process. No, I, I remember you did, didn't you? I remember your flash drive went wrong about a year ago, wasn't it? I think yeah. I remember talking with you about that. Yeah, it's yeah, pretty easy. Yeah, so I mean, you know, the least amount of things running, the better, in my opinion. But I, I'm just a paranoid nerd, so mm. you know you know how it is. <laughs> hey, what's up, Pixel Cherry? Uh, so let me ask another question while we're waiting for this to back up, then. Um, so I thought I installed a plugin that auto updates everything, all the Docker stuff and plugins, because it is amazingly annoying when I log into the Unraid interface for the first time in a couple of weeks and I just get spammed with those things on the side, like, you know, oh, yeah. warning, 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 and none of them are actual warnings. It's just, you know, it's nice if you update type of thing. So it, maybe after this is done, oh, look, we got a backup here. Perfect. There we are. Let me just drop it on my desktop, so I uh, do... So what we're looking at with the Unraid um, GUI on, that's on a CRT, is it, Bob? Yes, it is. That's Running awesome. in a 1024 <laughs> by 768. Or, uh, I think that's the resolution now, but we're going to, if we get uh, Windows 98 running, we're probably going to switch to a different resolution anyway. I just thought this was a decent fit for this little um, thing that I have mm, set yeah, up here for the cool. stream. It's um, very easy to see the text, which is good. <laughs> yeah. So now that that's backed up, should I just hit update now? Yep, go for it. 
And this never really takes a long time, right? No, it will just um, download, then unpack the files, and as long as it takes your server to reboot. Okay. The one thing that kind of messes with me on some of these updates, you see how it's the close button. Well, don't right click here? close. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's something that should really no. be fixed. There's a bunch of other updates, basic updates you could do as well, where you could hit close in the middle of the update. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty confusing because it looks like um, it's ready and it's telling you to close the, close the tab or page, isn't it? Yeah. I agree. Yeah, you know, my gripes with Unraid have always been either little things like that or things that really I shouldn't be messing with unless I was a Linux expert anyway. So that's not an Unraid problem. It's a my own lack of knowledge problem. Um, so, I, you know, overall, it's been pretty awesome for me. I, and I think what really drove home, because there's been a few times where I ran into some issues where I'm like, why did I bother with this? Why didn't I just get one of those NAS boxes, load it up with a couple of hard drives? It's going <laughs> to hurt my credit card really bad now, but, you know, I never have to worry. And then I ended up blowing out two motherboards a couple months ago. That's actually oh, how I found God, out yeah. that I, uh, I need glasses because apparently my oh. eyesight is no longer what it used to be when I'm looking at things up close. So uh, I ended up putting these this drive array. I mean, over the years, it's probably been 10 P PCs. Didn't you bend the pins, didn't you, Bob? Yeah. Didn't you bend the pins on the... Oh, man. On one I've of them. And on the other one, I, I must have mislined it by just a fraction of a millimeter. But when I, I snapped the thing down to pull the CPU into place, it, instead of dropping it into place, it went in the other direction. So I... And that one... A uh, little flame shot out. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but I mean... It's not just that I was able to switch it between a couple of computers over the years. That one week, these drives were booted in like five different uh, hardware configurations. All the same drives plugged in at once. I didn't change the RAID configuration, and there was no hiccup. Well, we got we got the done there. Um, we got the done there, Bob. Done. Okay. Cool. Closes closes are done. Now I just have to uh, reboot. So just just click on done there as well, and. We just need to reboot. You can reboot from the top there, look now. Yep. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, it was... It, if that itself doesn't speak for Unraid, then I, I couldn't possibly think what else would. Because what, what, what hardware RAID array on the planet could you just take those drives out? Even if you bought the exact same brand, even if you bought them all at the same day, what brand or you know what raid array on the planet could you just pull those drives out and drop them between the two and immediately pick up where oh, you yeah. left off zero none so it's it's worth for me personally it's worth the money for, to pay for unraid and just for that alone i know a lot of people have uh have been talking about different open source free alternatives but the last mm. time i tried those it was I hate to be disrespectful, but buy Linux nerds for Linux nerds. Everybody else is uh, just a normie that they don't want to waste their time on. So, <laughs> that's, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I'm being harsh because I am at heart an IT nerd. That's where I got my start. As everything I do is rooted in nerdiness. But a lot of Linux-based stuff is very clearly not at all thought about other people using it. So this is not yeah. my Unraid experience, you know, once again, unless we do what we're about to do today, which is why I dragged Ed along with me. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's see how easy it is today. <laughs> let's, not, let's not curse it, Bob. <laughs> well, one of the things we're going to do is hard. The other one is the easy part. So we'll get the hard stuff done first. Um, thanks to everybody mm -hmm. in the chat who's hanging out for this one. And there's going to be a couple more reboots. So if anybody has any questions for myself or Ed, definitely fire away because uh, we're going to have to sit through at least two more of these reboots, if I'm remembering correctly, for drive pass through. No, um, no, we should, depending on if your IO MMU groups are all enabled and everything, we should be good to go after this first reboot, hopefully. Hmm. TMS says, I get that people have nostalgia for old PCs, but when you go back to the DOS, Windows 95, Windows 98 days, you start finding out how easy it is to break games. So you're 100% correct, but I could just reword that statement and say, I get that people have nostalgia for old arcade boards, but when you go back to actually using them, you start finding out how easy it is for things to fail in what's supposed to be a simple chain. 
you could say the same thing about old cars or, or anything else. So mm -hmm. while every word you said is correct, sometimes it's part of the journey. It's just, just going through this stuff and, and having the, the real experience. And sometimes it's nostalgia. Sometimes it's experiencing it for the first time. But yeah, it's, um, you're right, but I still kind of enjoy it sometimes. Yeah, definitely. When I've been using Windows 98 recently, oh, I forgot how painful it is to be honest. It's just um, trying to get things to work and you know, how things are different now with yeah. the later versions of Windows like 10 and 11. But you can't say it about Amiga due to the WHD load project. I don't know what that is, but I do know there's a bunch of Amiga people that get really mad at me because they still think that you could use an old school Amiga to do everything that you need to do today. <laughs> I'll pass. Um, okay, so uh, unsigned devices. Right. Uh, where this plug in here? Let, uh, let's just let's just um, update that, just so we don't have to see that. Can I do it anymore. through Docker or plugins? You can okay. do it through plugins, but you may as well just click there. It's, it's just put it there because it's on where unassigned devices actually displays its information. So there we are. Done. That's done. Okay. Um, so. Uh, what about auto updating this stuff? Is there just something that we could drop in here to, to just do this and never worry about it? I thought I put a plugin in, but it didn't seem to work properly. Let's look on. Let's look on your plugins tab, Bob. CA auto update applications. Okay, so <clears throat> let's let's uh, let's update the plugins while we're here. <laughs> so just click on update all plugins. Okay, and done. And just click on the kind of icon of the auto update applications there, and let's just check it's set. Uh, if we go on to the tab Docker auto update settings. I wonder if I was so dumb that I just didn't see the Docker tab right there next to it. Yeah, I think you just hadn't enabled it, that's all. Well, you know. But one thing I'd, one thing I'd say to just um, be careful of is... Um, is sometimes you get an update and if there's a some kind of bug in some container you kind of update without any choice so yeah but i use so few things that if it mm. happened it happened so yeah but all right so. i think if you're not i think yeah the thing to not have auto update is probably next cloud so if you're not using next cloud you're probably good yeah, I am not, so that's fine. And in fact, while I do rely on my Unraid server for everything, it's also, its primary use is a backup. So if something auto-updated mm -hmm. and it, um, it messed with the interface and I had to take time to get it back, as long as my files are still there, which as we've proved time and time again with my, with my stupidity and, and breaking stuff, they, they are. So I, I think that's an important thing for me. Um, so I guess what, what's next? We have everything else is updated. All of the, the array is working fine. I got plenty of space. We have that SSD as the cache drive, which we also use for mm -hmm. uh, VMs, which is why those are a little bit speedier. We have plenty of room left on that as well. Uh, so I guess now we would go into uh, tools <coughs> and system devices to see if what we could pass through, correct? Yeah, so... These are our IO MMU groups. So at the moment, it looks like you've stubbed or bound to the VFIO driver these three pieces of hardware. So these three things here, we should be able to pass through without any issue to VMs. Okay. Um, because you've bound them, they will show up in the VM template. So anything we bind here will show up in the VM template. So let's go into the... Uh... Oh, geez, I didn't know this was there. Let me just delete it because I did not. Maybe you and I installed this the last time you and I were I think out. I think I asked you. To, I think I asked you to test it when I was developing it before it was finished, to be honest. All right. <laughs> so so um, let me remove it so we could reinstall it today. Uh, and then Windows 10 and loaded. Just, just while you're there, before we start, Ooh. Bob, can you just go to the Shares tab a moment just so we can delete the V-disk of the Windows 98 as well? So if you go into the domains, um, second from the top, that's it. And on the left, there's a little icon. Yeah, that's that always um, is annoying. So just go back, click, click back on the shares um, 
word at the top on the top bar. So I don't think you can see oh, the back sorry, yeah, because we're on a low, uh, we're on a low resolution. So that little kind of icon there, yeah, that's the one. And just delete. Oh, you d oh, we need we need another plugin, Bob. Um, go to the apps tab, please, and do a search for file manager. Um, two separate words, else it won't come up. There we go. And install that one, please. Okay. And so now it's back to the shares and back to that one, and we should be able to delete now. So, yeah, just delete that. No, not that one, Bob. <laughs> Sorry, I'm only joking. <laughs> Funny. If I wasn't in the VM directory, I might have actually gotten scared for a minute. But worst comes to worst, I have all my VMs backed up. So <laughs> that's the great thing about VMs, right? What if I accidentally deleted my Windows 10 VM? Well, I would just bring it back from the, the uh, array over to the SSD and we're done. So, all right. So here is, here are the other PCI devices, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think the one that we really want to use for this is the audio controller. Uh, because we want to see if that's going to work with Windows 98. I would love to have all three of these working. So should I just start with the so audio? So the, the audio controller you've got there, yeah. Should I just uh, um, try that and try booting it? Yeah. All right. Update. So do you want to pass that, that audio controller through to Windows 98? I think we are going to be able to, and at the very least, it's going to be worth a try. All right, so there you go. And I okay, to... um, let's have a look at that. Can you go back to the? Do you uh, can you go see that, or the... do you want me to do a, a screenshot for you? No, I can I can see that pretty pretty um. Okay. Pretty okay. Um... Okay, can we go back to the go back if you just close that um, and let's just go back and look at the template a moment, please. In the, the, uh, the VM template. template, you mean? Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, if you just scroll down a bit, please. And let's go right down to the bottom. Let me just see that one there. So. Okay, let's just um, <clears throat> just try and start it up again, Bob. One moment. Sure, I'm just gonna hit cancel because I didn't change anything. Yeah, just click click cancel. So, see if it's gonna do the same error. Yeah. Okay, so can you click on to add a new VM? I just want to try. Um, sure. It seems like it's kind of almost being used, but um. Set it to machine type um, Q35 7.1, about halfway down there. That's it. Um, have that as Q. That's it. And set the um, that that you can just leave whatever. This is just a little test, really. Um, and scroll down. Set the primary V disk location to none. They're okay. And then just scroll down and just add that device again. And let's just see if we. Um, get the same error with just kind of nothing there just to see if it was um just to see if it was the template okay so device resource is busy and for anybody just joining what we're doing is making sure that i could pass a hardware audio card through to vms on my machine so that we could actually use real hardware in this virtual machine which we'll get to in a bit Okay, so let's go back. Let's go back to the tools page and let's have a look at our IO MMU groups again. Okay. 
uh, in the system devices again? Yes, please. The, uh... Are we getting an echo in here as well uh, for anybody that's in the chat? I thought I had it set up okay, but please let us know if, if there's an echo when Ed talks. I could add um, slightly higher gate here just to make it. Yeah, maybe that'll be a little bit better. But all right, so um, where should we search or scroll for this? Or so let's let's go down and look at the device in our I O M M U groups here. It's that one right there. I'm wondering if we also need this as well. No, I see. Oops. Oops. So let's um let's go up to settings now, please, Bob. Okay. And you need to kind of scroll to the right hand side. There'll be a VM settings. I think because of the resolution, we maybe can't. Can you VM scroll manager? look in the browser left? Oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, VM manager. Okay. And you need to enable the advanced tab. And PCIe ACS override. Can you click onto that and and select both, please? Okay. Yep. And um, let's allow um, VFIO unsafe interrupts. I don't think we really need that, but it won't hurt for what we're doing. Then click on to apply. We will need a reboot for this to take effect, unfortunately. Um, and just click done. And before we reboot, can you just click on the flash again on the flash icon? I just want to see if you're booting with UEFI or um, legacy. Uh, I'm clicking on that. And oh, there we go. Took a minute. Oh. Yeah, and just scroll down a little bit. UEFI. Okay, so you're booting in UFI. I, I've always found that um, legacy works better with pass through on a lot of systems, but we'll, we'll just try keeping it in UEFI for the time being. Um, so now, if we reboot the server, we should have that IO MMU group split up a little bit more, and hopefully we might be able to pass that um, sound through. But I think if we do pass it through, Bob, to a Windows 98 VM, I don't think we're going to find a driver for that sound. God. We'll find out, uh, but this will at least pave the way for doing it with other devices. Mm. Um, so Dave's game room chimed in. Um, I, I was waiting to respond because I knew we were going to have another reboot. But uh, Dave said the reason why some of us run old hardware with Windows 98 and DOS is because emulation just isn't 100%. Same with virtual machines. They have three retro PCs and they're set up for that reason. A 486, a Pentium 3, Voodoo 3, 3000, uh, and a Pentium 4 XP machine. So that's actually one of the things that Ed's been working on and that why I dragged him into this today and that you could essentially, if you get passed through working correctly, which is what we're this is by far the most boring part, but this is what we're doing now, you could actually use an original Voodoo 3000 video yeah. card, original Sound Blaster audio cards. Um, I've, got, I've got mine here, Bob, if, if everyone on the stream can see this. I love um, it. That there is a Voodoo 3 3000 PCI card, and that's a Sound Blaster. I'm going to put it in this kind of case thingy here, and there's a little adapter you can buy on, um, on Amazon. It's about $20, and it's just a PCIe to PCI adapter that has two ports. And this kind of, you, you plug a USB cable into this bit here, then it plugs into, um, into the adapter. It's a bit like um, it's a bit like the risers you use for like mining rigs, and then you can actually pass through the old kind of PCIe devices. So for Windows, Windows ninety eight or Windows ninety five, you you can just emulate like a Pentium CPU, 
and then pass through a real GPU. It works really well for me. Um, so you actually get a real sound blaster and a proper graphics card. Before the Voodoo 3, I was using a Cirrus Logic card, and that worked pretty well. They're, they're a bit cheaper. Hmm. Yeah, I, um, I love this idea. And I, I think it's a happy medium, too. And I also think a lot of people... Maybe I'm speculating on this one a bit too much, but I think a lot of people are kind of hesitant to build a retro PC that they're only going to use for retro and maybe a couple times a year total. Whereas mm. here's just something, an Unraid machine you already own and you're already using for a bunch of other stuff. So why not just add this functionality to it? Yeah. Like for me as well, Bob, I've got like um, an old 486 that I put together um, at work. They were throwing away some, some old PCs they'd kept in storage for a while, so I quickly said I want them. But I, you know, out, of, out of the two I kind of took from them, I managed to get one working out of both of the parts. But I don't want, I'm kind of almost sort of scared to use them too much because I don't want them to break down. I, I know that might sound a bit daft, but, <laughs> but no. I kind of think if I, if I kind of used it regularly, you know, you know is it going to last as well? Oh, so we still got... That problem right so let's go to um go to tools again please bob and back to our system devices scroll down so it hasn't seemed to really split it up anymore has it um <clears throat> Okay, so I think what we can try is a bit of manual editing. Can you, um, is there any way you can get some text to me so I can edit it, Bob? Sure, absolutely. So if we go to the VM, um, the VM part here and just look at the XML. Yeah, if you can somehow get that to me. Yeah, I think I think that worked. And uh, just check so, here. So, yeah, okay. So where? Well, oh, that will just go into the chat, will it? Okay. Yeah. I'm not very used to um, Discord, to be honest. It's my favorite so far. It's um, it's like a more functional Skype. Uh, I just, it's been the one that's really stuck with me as easy to use. Mm. Right. Um, I, I I can't see where it is. I'm scared if I kind of fiddle with it too much, I'll disconnect myself. So, um, oh, I'm going to uh, need you to do. No, that should be pretty easy. Go back. Uh, did you pop out that window? Um, I just put it into full screen, I think, actually. Uh, All right, because if you just go back into your standard direct messages, it should be there as a message.txt file. Uh, okay. Um. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. Okay, so if we can just click on cancel on this screen now. And if we can go back to the tools and back to our system devices. And then scroll down to the bottom there. Thank you. So what these devices are, this is a Datapath Vision E1S, which would be just a cool thing to have if I wanted to use that VM to do video capture inside it. Not necessary though, we could pull that out. This is a Hopage capture card 
Um, same reason, we need to have, uh, totally could remove that. And this is one of the best MDA Fourier certified audio cards. Same thing, I could just remove that from the setup and not worry about it, or leave them in, uncheck them, and just have a dual boot scenario where maybe I also, if I ever needed to in an emergency, you could use this PC to do that. Um, so we don't need any of these, but at some point I would definitely like to have an original Sound Blaster exactly like you just showed on an external card. So getting this, getting passed through working on this machine would be pretty neat, but we could get around it if necessary. You see, I think what's happening, Bob, you see that we've got the um, PCI bridge there that's bound to the same IO MMU group. Yes. Because it doesn't have a tick, probably Unraid is using that. And so we can't pass it through. And because we can't pass that through as well, the, the, um, the multimedia audio card, because it's bound into that same group, it just doesn't like it. It's not, it's not, if we could split them up, we'd be fine, but um, it doesn't seem to be doing that. I'm going to try and pass through this as well at the same time, but there is a possibility it will crash the server if we do that. But we'll try anyway. If it does crash the server, it's no big deal. We'll just reboot. Fine. And if that so, doesn't work, um, I could just, not only will I uncheck these, I could physically take those two other cards out and see if we could pass the audio card through. Yeah, so you'd be probably better off if you want to pass the audio card through would be to actually change the PCIe slot it's in. It's a PCI. So, um, oh, it's a PCI, is it? Ah, in this okay. bridge right up here, this PCI bridge to PCI-X, that is built into the Vision E1S. These are the same thing. Oh, okay. Ah, so interesting it's just a that, PCI uh, card. <clears throat> all, right, all right. Also interesting is that this audio card here. So what's probably happening is the audio card's plugged into a PCI slot, but the motherboard itself, it's really just a PCI to PCIe converter built right into the motherboard. Right. So so let's try and pass through that. You know, um, that zero zero six there. I'll I'll just put that into the XML. Um, and it's slot zero, isn't it? So go back into the VM window and wait for your text to come through, right? Yeah, so I'll, I'll paste the text to you. Let's hopefully I've not made any mistakes in that. Okay. okay, you should have that now, Bob, hopefully. Got it, yep. So just to make things easier, I should just copy everything over, correct? Yeah, just, just paste over the top of all of that with, um, with what I've sent. Yeah. Perfect. And then just click update and hopefully it won't moan. And before you start it, just um just go on to edit. So go to the Windows 10, then edit, and then switch it so we can see the graphical interface part. And then scroll down and hopefully we'll see. Okay, that's it. Okay, so click cancel now. And if we can just go back and have a look at the XML this time. So you go to edit and then look at the xml let's scroll down and just check that we can see that second device still there okay yeah so we've got that at the bottom there that bus six slot zero that's the thing in the same io mmu so just click cancel on here and start it up and let's see if the server crashes or not <laughs> uh, it's not letting us so how about I just pull out the Not two capture cards and go from there? Um, the thing, the problem is, I believe, is it, is it's the part that's built into your motherboard that um, is trying to is trying to, the kind of like adapter part um, that's not really passing through. 
So this might actually be completely relevant to this stream and to what other people might be trying to do because if they're lucky enough to find a you know 2020 2019 motherboard like this one i think this is 2018 2019 that has a pci slot they might think well i could find a pci sound blaster so that's perfect i could just put it in and use it but they would run into this exact same scenario correct yeah, yeah they, they may well do i think it's a lot better to use an adapter that you know you can put into a pcie slot hmm. and then it's not part of the actual motherboard itself so okay. I've never, I've never, I've used it in multiple different hardware for probably kind of five years, from like a Threadripper board to Intel boards to, you know, um, AMD Ryzen boards, X four seventy five seventy. Never had a trouble passing it through that way. But I think there's one more thing we can try. Hopefully, we won't bore people on the stream too much. No, I have is, very boring it, streams and an amazing group of, of fellow nerds that like <laughs> like watching along with us. So, and also, I think there's a lot I, of people out there that listen to this while they're working, thinking, "I'm so glad Bob and Ed are going through this shit for me, so I don't have to." <laughs> so where are we? So let's um, let's um, click OK on that. We'll just delete that test Windows 10. We just maybe don't need that anymore. We never created a disk, so let me just remove VM just in case it doesn't mess with anything. All right. And let's go back to the main tab. What I want to do is I want to just try booting up the server in legacy mode. So this, um, this you might need to change possibly a setting on the actual, um, on the actual PC as it boots. You might have to click the button to kind of choose is it f2 or so sometimes what are the repercussions you know, the of, the... of using legacy mode versus uefi is the server going to run slower or am i going to lose any no, features no. or is it literally you won't you won't you won't, you won't you won't know you won't notice anything everyone always likes uefi because they think it's newer and it's going to be better but i've had some servers where if i use uefi um gpu pass through is just abysmal but i've also had other servers that if i use legacy pass through doesn't work as well so yeah. just some some things is kind of a bit of um kind of art as opposed to science well i'm glad you're here because every time i switch between i screw something up but luckily because we're using unraid my data never gets screwed up but my settings always <laughs> do so but that way we can easily go back if it goes wrong so don't worry um so click onto the flash now i did it just always takes a second Right. I believe anyway we could actually boot from legacy anyway, but if we disable the UEFI part, so if you scroll down and then just untick the permit UEFI boot mode and click apply. So inside of the motherboard BIOS, you must have, um, is it called CSM? compatibility module enabled i think it's called i might be wrong i don't know but i'm just going to put check. the capture card i'm going to plug my uh server into this capture card so we could all see the motherboard settings oh, on that's stream cool. i'm so lucky wow, I that's, moved that's, my server that's, over. that's clever <laughs> all right so now i, I just uh, reboot that. correct yes just just reboot so i'm gonna hit done here and yeah done there and then reboot what I'm actually going to do is then, hit shut down just so that I um I don't miss the boot. So let me hit that. And then just let me grab a cable to try and plug in. Luckily, everything's on wheels here now. Everything's on wheels. All the computer equipment is next to each other. So while I do have to move a few things to get to it, it's like a minute's worth of work. I'll probably, the server will probably still be shutting down as I'm getting to this. So I'm so glad I rearranged this room a bit. Random spare mic stand coming through. <laughs> so yeah, we just need to make sure the um, it is called CSM, um, standing for compatib compatibility support module.
Great, spider webs. Always fun. Is that an Atari I can see in the top left corner of the screen there, Bob? Yes, it is. I'm actually trying to nice. hunt down a late 70s Sony TV just to use with that oh, Atari. Awesome. Just to play like the four or five spinner games I really enjoy on Atari. <laughs> Alright, USB 2.0 ports I'm plugging into. Let me... Oh, um, Bob, I heard um, um, reading your um, your website the other day that there's an N64 core on Mr. now. It's... Uh, Robert has gone above and beyond and he has been able to get the first retail game booting. It's like the most basic N64 game. It's the Namco collection. But, yeah, wow, that is pretty... Uh... I can't believe it. I thought there was always a problem with the speed of what the RAM ran on the N64. Yep. So it's pretty amazing. All right. Hey, Save the CRTs is here. How's it going? Thank you so much. Yeah, I've only seen a few that people... I've seen a few that were very reasonably priced, and I've also seen a few where people wanted, like, a gazillion dollars for it, and it just, no, I'm not getting scammed. Okay, let's see what we're booting into here. Ah, we're loading. That's good. We haven't had to do anything. No, there's got to be... Something's about to explode or catch fire. I never, ever, <laughs> ever have it this easy when we're doing stuff like this. Never. TMS wants to know if that's some kind of Star Wars Imperial decor behind Space Invader 1. It does look like it you're frozen is. in uh, that's, carbonite. Yeah. That is my Death Star wall there. Um, I was inspired by a really cool YouTube channel called The Smuggler's Room where he kind of builds awesome Star Wars props. So I thought I'm going to try and build one. So. Okay, so that's all good signs. Looking good so far. Uh, will I cover the uh, Sippy Tang Mega 138K at some point? I don't know what that is. However, we have a bunch of uh, amazing contributors to the site that probably do. So if you happen to know uh, somebody who's into this stuff, you might want to message them directly. Um, if it's retro PC based, Vanessa is usually my go to. But we just got pretty pretty damn amazing people uh, that are willing to help. And so I'd like to cover everything I can, but I also don't like to talk about stuff I'm completely clueless about because I won't do it justice. So I might end up missing an important point or something. Um, okay, so we're back. Okay, yeah, let's just click on the flash again. Just double check it says we are booted legacy. Just for a sanity check before we do anything else. And we are. That's great. And let's go to the tools, system devices, and let's have a look at how we are here. And let's just try just running the um, Windows 10 loaded VM, because that's already got that pass through. If it doesn't work this time, it's not going to work at all. So fingers crossed. No. It just looks like it just doesn't like that PCIe to PCI bridge inside the actual motherboard itself, which is a shame. We could try. We could try um, moving, moving the slots around. How about the other things that are in there? Do they pass through? I was curious about Cause what, that because that's only going to take another second. So I figure while we're here, let me just do this real what we, quick. What we should do is we should just try the other ones. Are, are all of these PCIe devices? The data path is actually PCIe-X. Uh, on board has a PCIe converter built in. Nope, that one doesn't work. And then this last one should just be just a basic PCIe device. Um... Okay, so a basic so PCIe device does work. I'm not leaving just that one, uh, so I'm going to force stop. 
Uh, but what I, since we're here and since this is going to absolutely apply to what we're about to do, um, let's just check in. So can I, let's, let's see if I could pass any USBs through. And if not, I have an extra USB card I could install into a slot. So if we need direct access to Windows 98 through USB, I could have that here. Um, I, I, th I think probably we'd, we may be better off um, not passing through the whole USB controller to you on Windows 98. We can just pass through the actual keyboard. Okay. Is it worth, because I have one extra USB board, is it worth installing in this just to have? The thing is, is, prob is it may, we, even though it's got device support for, win for um, USB in Windows 98, just the chipset on the thing you pass through, it, it may pass through fine, but then Windows 98 might not see it and might not be able to install the drivers. But there is a virtual USB bus installed in the VM, which will definitely be seen. So I think it's easier to, to do it the other way. Is it safe to try both, or is that going to just cause conflicts? We we can try. Yeah, I don't. Because that's really just see one of those things that'll pay it forward. Because if I do uh, an XP VM or something like that, that should definitely have XP drivers. Um, so to re to put this back the way it was, I should uh, remove all th uncheck all three of these, and do I hit bind as well, just to kind of revert this back to the way it was before I remove them? Yeah, yeah, ju yeah, yeah. Just do that. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. And should I also go in to uh, settings uh, via manager and then set this back to no and disabled? It doesn't really matter, to be honest. Um, you, you can just leave it. I, I would just leave it. Um, you don't really need the um, unsafe interrupt. Set that to no, but leave the PCIe ACS override on both, I would. Uh, some what people would... are going to tell me, tell me off for saying that, but... I really well, what would the repercussions be? I can't imagine in my scenario. Basically, the ACI override is a patch. The ACS, sorry, override is a patch that splits up the IO MMU groups not in their natural state. And potentially, I believe it's a security risk if you were running loads of VMs in somewhere like a data center that one might be able to kind of grab information off another. Yeah, but we don't not care a about that. Here. <laughs> Okay, so let me power this off. Uh, while it's powering off, I am going to grab that card real quick, uh, which should just be right here. It'd be interesting, Bob, if that sound card would actually work in the slot that the one that passed through worked correctly. Well, it's PCI versus PCIe. So. Ah, oh, okay. So, so, um, so the one that did work was PCIe, yes? Yes. And the oh, two okay. that didn't okay. were not. One was PCI, oh. and the other technically was a PCIe uh, device, but on board, on board the device itself, it was actually a PCI-X to PCIe converter. Now I just have to find where that controller is. should have been right up on the top, but somehow it isn't. I was almost very organized, and then I, I ran out of space and had to split up my boxes where everything was. Jeez, anybody need a Raspberry Pi camera? I bought that expecting to do fun <laughs> things with, uh, with that, and then turns out that was extremely limited, so you can't really use it for everything I thought I might have. Damn. All right, it's got to be in the other box. That's easy, though. It's right over here. Ugh. I got a cool little device the other day, Bob, called a, a Zimmer board. Have you heard of those? No. It's about the Raspberry Pi size. Um, I don't know. If I can, I'm going to try and grab it and show it you while you're right, doing awesome. that. And for everyone kind of watching. If it's not right here in this box, I'm not going to waste anybody's time, but I, I swear I had at least two more of these laying around somewhere. So this is a Zimmer board. It's a, bit, a little bit bigger than a 
in a Raspberry Pi, but it's an X86 PC in a very small form factor. Oh, two, wow. Two LAN ports, and it's got a PCIe slot on the side. So <laughs> um, I haven't even turned it on yet, but I'm wondering what it can do. Might make a nice little emulation machine or something. Could. I wonder if it could run Unraid on it. Oh, it can. Yeah, it definitely can. Yeah. When I was uh, still living in the city, I was looking for the smallest possible Unraid solution. Well, that's disappointing. It has some little cables where you can plug in two, um, two SATA hard drives, and it will actually power off the actual board as well. It will, it will power two three and a half inch drives. Hey, but that's the kind of max you're going to be able to have. I didn't really. know I had. Well, that was a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to put this stuff aside so I don't waste anybody else's time, and I'm just going to uh, remove, remove those cards, and that way we can just pick up where we left off here. Is there a place for people that want to um, donate, like, old video cards and... Stuff that's, like, not retro and sought after yet, but might be at some point. Like, uh, you know, 10, 15-year-old video cards that, you know, you don't really have a purpose for now. Is that, is that mm. something anybody wants, or is that still just going to be junk for a very long time? I don't know. I think, I think you know, there's definitely some people who want it. Well... I wish I knew, because I don't like, I, I refuse to throw stuff out that could be of use to people. I would much rather give it to people. So, see if I could find something. All right. Very carefully sliding the stuff over. What I've been looking for for a while is um, a PCIe card, GPU, that originally had um, support for Windows 98 have Windows 98 drivers, so I could just pass through something in a PCIe slot to a VM. Oh. Huh. No luck at all with that, I guess? I think I, I found... I did find one, but I bought it on eBay and it didn't work. Um, I think I was sold, like, a Duff card. Um, I, can't, I can't remember what it... Because I think there was kind of, like, one... Um, it came out way after Windows 98 in the kind of XP era, but I think they made drivers for it. There's there's a website I used to look at. I can't remember what it was called. Like I think it's called Phil's Computer, in something like that, in to do with um. Phil's Computer Lab, a website called Phil's Computer Lab. I think he's got a list of various Windows 98 hardware that works. Hardware, graphics cards. All right, so I was able to remove all of the old offending cards. Um, and, you know, I was really hoping to get... I, I have no idea where that PCI card could have gone, or the USB card could have gone, because that's something that I would definitely use, and would never have thrown out, and I mm. think it would actually be really handy for basically any VMs, even if I end up with a Windows 7 VM with, um, for gaming or something. I'm just going to take one more quick look through here. Uh, the, um, the, the PCIe USB card will most definitely pass through, especially if you put it in the same slot as that other one was in. Yeah, I have never had a problem passing those through. It was only th these exact weird devices that I was just <laughs> that we were just showing. Here it is. I knew it. I I knew that was worth a look. <laughs> I knew it was worth another look. D double check on that card as well that you don't need to plug a SATA power into it, Bob. Nope. It's kind of stuck in here. Well, let me just hulk out and rip that open. So this is actually USB 3, so then there's going to be zero chance that it works in 98. But, you know, I'm glad we found it. All right, let's very, very carefully pile these up. 
and get these out of the way for now. And I'll come back with anti-static bags later. Don't worry, my fellow nerds, I'm not going to leave it without <laughs> static protection. <laughs> All right, and then I'm going to put this in the exact same slot that without a doubt definitely worked just now, even though I'm sure any slot would work, but, you know, might as well just put it in the mm. one that we know works for pass-through. How many PCIe slots has your motherboard got, Bob? Uh, three by 16, one by one, and then two PCI slots. All right. I'm going to boot it as I'm putting the rest of it back together just to save us some time. Let's just all cross our fingers and hope I don't drop a screw onto the motherboard and end this stream <laughs> in a horrifically embarrassing manner. With a bit of a fire and sparks. Always interesting. This is always the time where I wonder where I put my leftover... PCI or uh, expansion slot covers for the case because it's always the same like I'm just kind of looking at a pile of stuff I have right now and it's not here so I'm just going to leave them off and I guarantee you when I'm uh, putting those things in the PCI or in uh, those cards in anti-static bags later I'm going to run into like five of these covers that are the exact ones for this one and I have to take it no, all apart I have again. The, I have the exact same thing I you know you look for um one of the little cover things, you can't find it anywhere. Then I'll be looking through a drawer two months later and find a box of 20 of them and think, oh yeah. I have random piles of screws places that I distinctly remember buying and saying, okay, mark these and leave these separate because these are the special ones for that thing that you need, not the other thing. So, and then I just end up with bags of them because I forget to mark them mm. or, or I didn't realize I already had 500 from the last time because yeah, so that's another thing. I, uh, I, th I think we all do that. We all start with good intentions about kind of, you know, when we've got something, a lot of times I'll kind of put it in a little bag somewhere and think I'll remember what that is and sort that out later. And then a week later, I, I don't, can't even remember what it was, and it just goes into a tin with a million other screws. And <laughs> yep. Guilty. Server's back together, case is back together. I believe it's powered on. Put this back. We'll find out in a moment. Ugh. All right. Oh, wow. It's it it's back up. Here awesome. Hey, what's up, Lou? So I need to give a shout out to Lou because Lou is the one that came to my rescue after I blew up two motherboards. <laughs> Lou was nice enough to send me his uh, motherboard and CPU, and that's what we're using right now. So this stream, nice. sponsored by Lou's Retro Source, <laughs> would not be uh, not be possible without him. So thank you, my friend. I really appreciate it. We should just be able to pass through that USB controller, correct? Yes. And if you, if you don't want to have to actually reboot, if you want to be super quick, we can do a little kind of... Um, we, we can edit the XML. Nah. Because but... I don't plan on restarting the server oh, okay. any other time. Let me just you, you, have, you did check the checkbox on it, didn't you? I didn't see you do that. Did I, did I do what? You did check the checkbox next to the USB and click bind. I didn't see you. I, I was I probably did. looking away from the screen. Okay, cool. No, I did. It, uh, but, you know, that's absolutely something I would do. So we'll double check again when we go back in. But after this reboot, we should be good. So I'll mark down. Um, you know, in fact, let me make a little note. <laughs> in an hour in, and we're finally starting the purpose of the stream. Well, you know, it's it's good for people to see this because this is exactly what this stuff is like. You go in thinking I'm just going to load something up real quick. Oh, but hold on, let me pass through my video card, and there there you go. Here's where we're at. <laughs> oh. 
Uh, all right. Now, um, I guess while we're waiting for this to come up, uh, one of the things that I wanted to load up, even if we don't get it fully working, you know, maybe no sound or something like that, was a game that was a bin and queue file. So I was kind of <laughs> wondering, what is the... Um, with Unraid, I know you could mount ISOs to a VM, but can you mount bin and queue? Mm, that's a good question. I don't think we can. Um, I wonder. Um, let me and ask. If not, does Google. anybody in the chat, especially my uh, my fellow retro nerds here, Dave TMS, do you have software that just easily converts bin and queue to ISO for this purpose? Yeah, we should better do that. Jeff, what game are you looking to ultimately play? Well, it all started on eBay. I didn't realize that Tomcat Alley was also released as a PC game. So I talked to my friend of mine who collects these things, and we found one sealed on eBay for a ridiculous price, but they accepted a fair buy it now price. And while I will not be opening up a completely sealed game that I'm going to be sending my friend, he did send it to me first just so I could take some fun pictures, and someone else was able to send me the bin and Q files for this. So if you all want to report me to the FCC for buying a game, not opening it, and downloading the bin and queue files, that's go right ahead. I'm sure I'm going to get in trouble for it. Positive I will. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I will at least try to be booting at the moment. Okay, so we're back up. Let's go into VMs. Right. We, can, we can convert in Linux, but... Um... We need something called B chunk. I'm not. I'm just seeing if it's in what's called the Nerd Pack. If we can actually install that onto Unraid, and then we can just do an easy convert on the server from the bin and queue into um, ISO. And right now, all we're doing is just loading up this Windows 10 VM just to make sure that passed through correctly. I can't imagine it didn't, but, you know. Uh, and I should just be able to test that by simply plugging in any USB drive into it, right? Yep. Let me plug this in here to make sure there's something on it. Reject. All right, so I'm just going to plug this in, and if that works, then we're good to go, and then we can just move to the Windows 98 section of this stream. Damn it, i got to crawl all the way down there. Ugh. You know, it's very, there are surprisingly rare moments that I wish I was thinner, and this is one of them. Usually I don't care. <laughs> I'm still in good enough shape where I can walk <laughs> everywhere and, you know, do my own, mow my own lawn and stuff. But these are the times where I'm like, you know, if I were a few pounds smaller, I could get way easier have time getting back here. Well, we can convert, um, unfortunately, the um, B chunk's not in the nerd pack for doing the conversion on Unraid. But we can use um, Image Burn, IMG Burn on Windows, if you can download that one, Bob. I uh, already have it. That will convert it, apparently. Okay, beautiful. Uh, the USB is passing through without any problem whatsoever. Uh, so I'm just going to eject this. Shut down the VM, and then we, in about 10 seconds, we'll be ready to start the Windows 98 part of it then. Oh, did, did um, what machine are you going to, um, convert the thing on? The one, the one we're on the CRT with? Uh, yeah, I could, I could do that right there, just for, um, just so people could see it as well. Okay. So, um, let me just... All 
All right. So apparently we need to um, choose create image from files and folders and then just select the Q file. Well, that's it. And set the output format to ISO. That should do it, hopefully. I only selected the um, Q file. Um, it says here that's all you have to do. Um, all right, let's give it a try then. The, uh, See how big it is. No, that is 1K. Oh. Try adding both. All right, that should be it. Should be the same size. Oh, that so looks better, doesn't it? Properties. Uh, yeah. All right, that should be exactly what we need. And I guess I should uh, put this on the Unraid server somewhere, right? Yeah, pop it in the ISO share is the best place. Uh, we'll, have, we'll have easy access to that. I can't even begin to tell you how funny it is to me that I am dropping a Tomcat Alley ISO into the <laughs> ISO's folder. I'm going to leave it there. So every time I go into the ISO folder, I just laugh. Okay. Uh, check the ISO oh. contents first. All right, let me just open this with... Um, uh, seven zip. Oh yeah, that's probably not it then. Well, we'll come back to this. We'll get 98 working first. Um, but if anybody has a guide or anything else we could do. Yeah, if anyone in the chat knows how we can convert it. I'm... Yeah. What's up, Fibble? Hi, Juice. Um... Hmm. Yeah, if anybody has a guide or anything, we could just come back to that later. Um, I'll delete that ISO for now then, because that's not going to work. Yeah, Fibble, that's exactly it. So if you, uh, if you have a clue, uh, let us know. But let's start with, um, or let's just move on to the Windows 98 part. So... Um, so for anybody just joining, we have spent the past hour making sure that the server is set up properly. We've updated the Unraid server. We've checked to see what hardware can pass through. Um, the way this motherboard uses its PCI to PCIe converter did not allow me to pass through a sound card that I was hoping would work. Uh, we'll do a follow-up stream in a couple of weeks where I'll buy some new equipment and we'll do that. You know, that'll be the purpose next time. So for now then, what we're actually just going to do is use Ed's uh, application that he built to do this and install this for you so that we have a much less painful time installing Windows 98. So I have a feeling, all right, at Win 98, not, all I gotta do is search for Win 98 and your thing should come right up, right? Yeah. That's the one, Win 98 in a box. So all so we do is hit install, correct? Click install, yeah. 
And there's a couple of options we can choose. Um, if you scroll down, oh, uh, Lou to the rescue once again also found uh, an ISO of Tomcat Alley for us to download. Oh, nice. Thank you, Lou. Downloading that right now. Much, much appreciated. Okay, so uh, we're going to scroll down so, here. So and basically, here. the um, the thing that this can do, obviously here, you tell it what you want to call it. So if you didn't want to call it Windows 98, you can call it whatever you like. Um, the Windows 98 type, it can install the, the kind of plain vanilla Windows 98 or with the um, kind of kernel effect patch. I normally run it with a kernel FX patch, to mm -hmm. be honest. Um, allows you to run some more modern stuff. Um, and where it says fix XML, what to do if the VM exists. So there's custom XML inside of the VM in the kind of template. When, when you saw earlier when we were looking at the XML and fiddling around in the VM, Windows 98 needs some custom XML into it, but unraid strips it out when you actually change um change hardware in the template so if you run the if you run the container again when it already exists it will fix the xml and put that in for you um so if you kind of made a hardware change like we're going to in a minute when we when we add the actual cd drive with the with the image in then we'll want, want to run the fix xml afterwards when we've done that um and just to start vm after creation that's set to yes um this here um the 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 other option other than fix xml is it will back up the the windows 98 vm that you've already got and reinstall another one so you know if you wanted just to put another one on it it can do that well basically and for all the Unraid, default settings are what most people would just use yeah right? all, all of the default settings will work but just just if you keep your um if you keep your vm images in a different place just change it at the top here but the default place on unraid Oh, I'm, I'm moving the cursor around like people can see it, but it's just on my screen over the top of yours. <laughs> so, so yeah, so there, that's the default location. But, but if you kind of like, you, you have a different share and you might call it VMs, just choose where you want it to install it to. So, so with that, I do yeah, have just to pause real quick for this one because this is something that Ed had helped me out with offline before. Um, so I guess I'll back a step before that. Very many apps that you install on this require a little bit more tweaking on installation. For example, I just installed FileZilla, but that wouldn't work mm. until you told it what your home directory was in the settings in the Linux file format. And that even didn't work, so I ended up deleting it and using somebody else's port of FileZilla over to Unraid. Yeah. But there's always something to pay attention to. And this one, um, since we had already messed with it before we don't need to but what we and probably everybody who uses unraid would suggest is that unless your raid array is with ssds if you use mechanical drives like i do you're going to want to put all of your vms on an ssd even just a cheap one because it's yeah. going to be so much faster but the default directory for vms is mount user domains which would be on your array unless you change it mm -hmm. So Ed and I went no, back and I'd... set all of those to go onto the SSD itself. Uh, I'll just stop you there, Bob. By default, the domain share, if you have an SSD, is always on the SSD. You, really? So if you created the server without an SSD at first, then it might be not there. If you, if you just um, click onto the um, shares tab and open a new tab so we can keep this open for a moment, uh, I'll show you what I mean. So if you click onto the domains, the word domains this time, instead of the icon next to it, um, see the primary storage is set to cache. Yes. So, so by default, if you've got, if when you first install your Unraid server, you have, a, you have an SSD and a cache drive, it will automatically put it there. But I think maybe when you first set up yours, you didn't have an SSD possibly. Yeah. So it will, it will only put it on the array. But, but for most people, it should already be on there. But just check it's set to, um, to be on the cache or the name of your pool that you have. Good tip. And then, and then that share will be in the correct place. Okay. 
All right, so now that we have all of that determined, all I got to do yep. is hit apply. Just, just click on apply. Yep, that's it. And that's it, right? It, it is. That's it. That was quick. All right, going into VMs. I think it had part of the... So, so now just like click on there and go to VNC console. And it should start booting. And the username's retro now because <laughs> just click OK. And we should be. What I'd suggest to do is on, on the left hand side where that little kind of arrow thing is. Otherwise, the mouse is a bit hard to control. Um, yeah. You see that little kind of that thing there? Yeah. O open that up. That little, that little kind of tab thingy. That's the VNC tab. Open that and make it go onto full screen, just down onto that one. Yeah, full up, up to that one. And now you'll find the mouse kind of works a little bit better. Uh, and how do you? How do I get out of full screen? Um, just back on there. Yeah. Is there like a key command I could use just uh, just in case? I don't think so. I don't. I'm I'm not sure to be honest. It's just part of the um, web VNC. You're being very brave changing resolution on Windows 98. <laughs> okay. It, oh, actually, can we stop this one, Bob? Stop the uh, VM? Just, I, yeah, stop, stop the whole VM. I notice you're running. The reason it was so quick in installing it is because you were running an older version that you'd already downloaded before so it had the container there so let's just kind of come let's just close this window sorry everyone on the stream i should have realized that when i saw how quickly it downloaded so just remove that and the disk so force stop and then remove the vm and disks okay and now let's go back to the docker tab and now find the windows 98 in a box and click remove on that as well and remove image as well yes excellent and now let's just go back and add it in again and it will re-download the it, it the latest version it, it was just old that one and just click apply that's there we are that's taking a little bit longer that's that's how I, how long you'd expect it to do all right Have you um, started downloading the ISO file, Bob, as yet? Already downloaded, and I, I am putting it into the directory right now. Nice. And uh, I'm actually going to set the uh, Windows 98 to, like, probably 1024 by 768, just to, yeah. just because. Just All right, done. Now that's in VMs. That's already started, so we could just go in and double check it here. I've never heard of Mirient either, but um, I'm going to look into that. All right, so like Ed suggested, go to full screen mode. What was that workaround that had popped up? Okay. If you want to check out Doom, you can run Doom 95 at the top there. If you want to have a, just a quick look at that, just click New Game. There we go, that's Doom. <laughs> uh, just use the keyboard stuff. That is running 
way smoother than I would have ever seen it on a PC running Windows 98. That is very funny. And for everyone watching, that's the shareware version of Doom, so <laughs> no, no one can tell us off. <laughs> Well, that's pretty funny. I was, oh, I was playing uh, Doom wondering why I couldn't jump out of the, the other day. Uh, hitting escape gets out of the VM. That's pretty funny. Yeah, okay. so go, go... All right. And if you want to get out of Doom, go to that key on the no VNC that says A. See, this is why we really want to pass through a keyboard and mouse. Um, and then click the escape button. This down to... Yeah, and then we can exit from here. And Y to exit. All right, I am going to shut down this VM. Get out of full screen mode, and then well, let's add that ISO file and see what happens. Right, so what we want to do is scroll down. Uh, uh, just OS install ISO because it just drops it right in as a CD-ROM drive. That that probably should be okay. Um, yeah, yeah, let's cast this just... USB controller through just to see what happens. <laughs> Can you scroll back up a minute just before you do? I just want to check that the bus is... Yeah, it's IDE, isn't it? That's okay. That should be fine. Okay. Also, Fibble, if you're more interested why Unraid versus anything else, I talked about it at the very beginning of the stream and also the interview I did with Ed, which you just search this channel for Space Invader 1, Ed, whatever, and uh, that's, that's why it's currently my favorite. Um, I'm a blunt asshole nerd, so if there's something else that I think is better in the future, I will let everybody know. But so far, every single time I did something awful that probably should have killed my entire Unraid server, all of my data has persisted. Every time. And I talked a bit at the beginning about how bad I screwed all this stuff up <laughs> earlier, earlier this year. But saved by Lou. New hardware found. Well, this should be interesting. So that's that's the um that's the <laughs> I don't think it's gonna find um Yeah, US I don't think it's gonna find that the for the drivers. So yeah, don't yeah. worry about that black screen that flashes up. I had to make it do that because of the graphics driver I used. Otherwise it kind of went a bit weird. So And there we have it. Wow. Seriously, that's that fast? <laughs> mm -hmm. I have never seen this before. This is very cool. So let's see. Can we make it a bit bigger? I think there was a bit where you could make the, this double size and the options when you were on there a moment ago, Bob. Yep, so I'm actually really... going to be going for full screen. <laughs> it's terribly perfect. I think I should actually be running this at 640 by 480. Um, Lou, uh, we were actually talking about that before. Um, the next stream I do with this is going to be passing through a voodoo card and a sound blaster to this so that you have true pass-through. Mm. So it would actually be a zero latency, well, zero over an original PC build because you're actually using the same sound and graphics card internally the way you would just you know infinitely easier to install as you saw here 
Yeah, because um, the graphics card used in this is just the QMU QXL card, and there's no driver for it in Windows 98. So I found some custom driver that was made that was meant to be kind of pretty much for any graphics card that gave it kind of 3D capabilities, and it seemed to work with the QXL driver. So, um, but you'll get much better results out of a real graphics card. Yeah, pass through and and you're getting close to kind of like a real machine then with the pass through you know 50 percent of the machine will be kind of real with the sound and the sound and gpu so okay cool. so we got um we got this working to the point now where this is awesome except there's a few other things that we have to work on so sound is definitely one of them because we're not getting any sound pass through and if this was like uh, Windows 7 VM, I would use, uh, I would probably be using something like Parsec, both because it could emulate all of the sound drivers as well, but also the way Parsec works is it reads your keyboard, mouse, and video commands. So they, they showed tests um, that you could actually have a VM running somewhere, and on your display, the graphics will show up at the exact same time as the original device because of how their software does it. That's why they got bought out for a giant chunk of money. So, oh, they've um, been bought out now, I didn't know that. Yeah, so I think it was a giant chunk of money. I hope they deserve it. But uh, so what can we do for oh, Windows Oh, Bob, click, click, on, click on Oprah a moment on, on there. Click, click on the Oprah browser. That was put in there, just the old net, so um, <laughs> you can look at You know where I'm going. Stuff. Uh, I... <laughs> no, this probably... is kind of bringing it from a while ago. But what what we need to do is set up the um, we'd have to set up the what the um, what's it called retro NAS for the yeah for that's the fine. old stuff. Um, I think this would be primarily for gaming. So, what are we gonna? Do, uh, what are your suggestions about um, uh, about sound? Sound. If you look there, it does have an emulated sound blaster installed, but it's getting the sound out of there. Um, Spice client, which is like VNC client, is meant to support sound. I had a quick look at it last night, but I couldn't actually get it to work. Um, the Spice client in Windows is a bit of a pain because it doesn't have a GUI. You have to just type type in um, remoteviewer.exe and then Spice and then the IP address and I think port 5902 um, for Unraid. So really, to have sound in this, you are going to need to pass through a real sound card that is compatible with Windows 98 to get good sound. There is um, a plugin for Unraid that's in development, um, which has sound drivers that will download sound, because Unraid doesn't have any sound drivers by default, because normally it doesn't need sound itself. And the emulation system, KVM, um, QMU, QMU will do like, um, it can use the host sound as a back end to emulate the sound card through to it. Um, but I haven't really had much chance to look at that yet and try and get that working. But that is something that might work in the future. And then you would you would just be able to use the sound card on your Unraid server as the host and, and the emulated sound would come out of that. Because it is a real shame not to have sound, really. It kind of spoils it a little bit, I think. Yeah, um, and what about the mouse control? Because this is definitely funky. Like every time I yeah, get near the, the corner of the screen, it, it goes to yeah. The, um... So so what you want to do for that is we could you know if if you've got a USB um, keyboard and mouse that's plugged into um, the server, we can just pass that through. We can try and pass that through as a so USB what I, device. I have that I think now. would be a pretty good uh, a pretty good test is one of these wireless ones that I use with my Mister. Uh, so that'd be a pretty easy thing to test then. So let me. Certainly not going to be good for gaming. I, I certainly wouldn't play Tomcat Alley with a uh, touchpad, although it's probably easier than the original Se right. <laughs> Sega pad. So just plug this into any USB port in my server. So yeah, right? plug that into any USB port, and then um, hopefully it should come up 
in Unraid as a separate keyboard and mouse, and then we can pass that through to Windows 98. All right. So uh, close or shut down this VM, right? Yeah. And where would it show up in Unraid? So just refresh the page a moment, please. And go back to the Windows 98 template. Now, if we scroll down, we should see some USB devices. Um, there we are. We've got that cyber power. No, that's Is my that, power no, that's supply. Yeah, it's still UPS. Um, Let's go to tools a moment. Would we have to reboot? Shouldn't do. No, it should. It should. It should come straight up there. It's um, possible I didn't plug it into a port that's connected. I could try a different port, but I guess we should yeah. look for it here. Just go into system devices, and we should be able to see the USB stuff there. Um, it'd be down further. The USB devices at the bottom. Uh, it doesn't look like it can see it there at the moment. All right, let me just try a different port then. Hey, what's up, Stephen? Um... So I should just be able to refresh this page if I had plugged it into a port that was connected, right? Yes, yeah. Oh, there it is, that mini keyboard Perfect. with touchpad. All right, note to self, the USB 2.0 uh, ports uh, in the front don't work. But hopefully that would kind of just run on Windows 98. So if you could plug that into a real Windows 98, it would work. So if you just select both of the checkboxes next to that one, click update. And just before you do anything, before you run it, um, just go back to the Docker tab and just fix the XML so it still emulates a Pentium. I think I've made it a Pentium 3 on this one. So uh, click on to You mean the edit? I'll, I'll just show, yeah, I'll just show people now. If you, if you, look at, if you click on Edit and um, then click on the XML and scroll down to the bottom, You'll notice at the bottom there's nothing because Unraid has stripped it out because we made a change. So if you click on cancel now. And then go back to the Docker page. Oh, no, sorry, sorry, not that one. On the Docker tab at the top there. It's a bit confusing having to use that as well. So now if you run this, if you run the Windows 98 in a box, again, just click, click start. It will just fix the XML. It should have done that now. And so now if we go back to the... Um, this is where I find out that I didn't finish that part. <laughs> if you look at the XML now, it should say Pentium at the bottom, hopefully. Yeah, so, so it's emulating can... a Pentium 3. So, okay. so now, yeah, you, you, can, you can cancel that and start it up. And, you know, because we've added that in, it's put the XML back to how it should be, and hopefully that little USB thing will work. Cameron wants to know, does virtual audio cable have an old version that supports Windows 98? That's interesting. Nothing on the USB keyboard. Maybe I, it, maybe it just needs to. Uh, you to you may install. you may need to kind of like yeah let it find the device first. Here we go. Oh, that's your PCIe. That's your USB oh, three yeah, card. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, so mini. Keyboard. Oh, there we are, mini keyboard. So it's going to try and hopefully it might just click next. If it can, and again, sorry, click on the. Oh yeah, that, that's it. I, I think I've I've put the image in there already. So if you just click OK, just click Yes for that. 
finish here, uh, hopefully. Oh, that's the, that's what I was, the human interface device is what I had before. Yeah, all right. Is it working? It is definitely hey. working. Hey, nice. <laughs> Is the keyboard part working as well, or is it just the mouse? It might be just the mouse. Because um, um, it came up twice asking for the driver, so I'm wondering if it kind of thought one part is, you know, it's going to install two things. Yeah, good point. Maybe we should reboot the VM and let it um, see if it can see it again. Also, going to remove that uh, oh. USB. Oh, you're taking that. Yeah, good idea. Yeah. And remember to run the um, the Docker container again, just to fix. Is that everything. something that could be fixed in an updated version of this? Um, basically, it's just on RAID. When when you make a change, it strips out custom XML. It's part of the VM manager, and Windows 98 would probably run anyway without having an emulated Pentium, but just to be closer to what it should be, I think it's better to, you know, otherwise it's just running Windows 98 as your CPU. Um, there is a, I, I integrated a patch into this to, um, because Windows 98 will crash with fast CPUs, so you have to actually patch the ISO to allow it to run on more modern hardware. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything more horrible than having to play it with that little thing. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible, but um, this, is, uh, this is perfect. This is exactly cool. what we were hoping for. We could just use a USB keyboard and mouse. So that is going to be important. Um, yeah, so it's just sound is our only problem, really. But hopefully... Um, the guy who's making the sound plugin, if I send him a link to the live stream, he can see why some of us so much want to have the sound drivers integrated into Unray. So, yeah, and hopefully. Show him, show him kind of why we kind of want it. But, you know, um, you can get a sound blaster, um, PCI sound blaster, for about 15 US dollars. And that with. Um, that with the PCIe adapter, you know, you're looking at probably $35 and you could have like sound pass through with a proper sound blaster. I'm just double checking virtual audio cable. I have a feeling if this was, if it was that easy, you all would have uh, figured it out by now, but. XP to Windows 11. The kernel EX does allow some XP stuff to be installed, um, but whether it would work is another uh, thing. I am going to drop this here in your chat to see, um, and let me download it and see what we could do. I have, like, zero expectations for this, but it's certainly worth yeah. trying. It would be it would be very cool if it worked, wouldn't it? Yeah. 
Where did I put it? Here we go. And if anyone would like a container built for Windows 95 to be the same as this, so you can install that, just reach out to um, Bob and he'll let me know if there's any interest. What would the advantage be? And excuse my uh, ignorance here. Um, the advantage is in, in what, sorry? In having a Windows 95 versus a 98 image. Oh, just, just for people who want to just have only Windows 95. But for software you can run, I wouldn't think there's any difference at all. But just for nostalgia, just to kind of remember what it was like, really. Okay. I was just wondering if there was something like certain games might only run on one versus the other, but it's I been so long so. that I, I wouldn't even remember that. I don't think Windows 95 had USB support at all, did it? So with, with Windows 95, you can pass through a, a keyboard and mouse, but you but you do it in a slightly different way. You You emulate a serial um, um so uh and then link sega that 90s the has USB. a very good question for all this though does this would that only work with pci pass through what about agp and isa stuff um there's no agp to pcie adapter i've ever managed to find i don't think anyone's ever made it so unfortunately you're limited to pcie devices that's why I kind of went it went for the um, PCI, the PCI Voodoo three thousand. But yeah, you know, that you know, if if there was an AGP adapter, that would be super cool. And I'm pretty sure there is some PCIe card. Like I said, I'm not sure if it's the. Um, uh, the Radian 7200 looking here, I think might have made a card that was PCIe. I'm not sure, to be honest. So funny, the vCable Setup EXE isn't running on my Windows 10 machine either. Probably because it's just too old, this version, for Windows 10, and it's too new for Windows 98. We're stuck in the middle. So, yeah, it's not it's not going to work. Um, oh, hang on, hang on. Right hand click it, actually. Sorry. Um, I forgot with the kernel X. Um, yeah, go to properties. Is it properties? It's such a long time since. And then go to kernel X. And. Use specific cape. Yep. Um, and then tell it to be XP. It might work, it might not. And now you can run it. No, it's still no good. Weird. Uh... I think there's a kind of list of software. That, let me have a bit. Or maybe it's because I'm running it over the network. Yeah, try and just copy it onto the desktop, maybe. I changed that to, to 98 just to see. Um, that was XP. I'll put that back. And yes, so we're going to go here. You'll probably have to do the um, the compatibility thing on the um, file again, because it's a new file kind of thing. No, oh, interesting. Okay. No, I think, you know, it will run software. But I think when it's kind of drivers and stuff that's too new for it, it just doesn't, you know, um, Windows XP is built off um, totally different um, base than 98. 
based off NT, isn't it, when there's NT on? Just doing a couple of very quick searches here, and I'll also keep an eye on the chat, obviously. ASIO for all, I'm going to go, out, go on a limb and say, no, Windows 98 compatible. But let me double check. We could try using the Spice client if you want to give that a quick go, Bob, because I didn't try much yesterday with it. Sure. What's the Spice client? Uh, is it paid software or is it something we could just give a try? Oh, it's, it's free. Yeah. So if, if we just shut down the VM. And if my you other type keyboard in... and mouse here. Would that restart in MS DOS mode? Um, I believe so, yeah. Okay. Now, what are we doing from here? So, um, we want to download something called Vert Viewer. So, if you do a search for Vert Viewer, um, um, not Vert in Manager. A... In Unraid? Oh, oh just... no, not 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 on Unraid. No, just um in a normal Google browser. Vert right. viewer. Myvert dot com. Um, no. <laughs> no. Um, I'll see if I can put a link in the chat. Uh, if you if you go, if you go to vert hyphen manager dot org. Okay. Site cannot be reached. Mm. Hey, Dan, mm. thank you so much for the super chat. Dan's on lunch, but just showing their support. Much, much, much appreciated. Thank you. Um, so, uh, do, Ed, could you in the win, uh, in the stream chat here, right? And uh, you have that open for YouTube, right? Um, hang on. yeah, let me have a look. If you just type hi in the stream chat, uh, I can make you an admin. Oh, which oh on look... YouTube. Oh, okay. Yes, on YouTube, which yeah, would allow you to drop links even... there. Okay, I didn't actually have that in. Um... Yeah, I'm just logging into my YouTube account.
my sound still there? Uh, go. Got gotcha. oh. you. Yep. Yeah. All right. There you go. Uh, that now you should be able to uh, drop a link so if anybody in the chat or anybody rewatching it wants to do it. Uh, Give me one moment. This is the rule. So where where do I put it? Just into the chat, do I, Bob? Yep, right into the YouTube chat. Right, so that is where um, you can download the Vert Viewer from, which we'll do. Which we'll do now. I'm assuming we're going to want the x86 MSI one, right? So yeah, let me just um, have a look on here as well. So I can see. Well, the viewer would be on my Windows 10 machine, right? Yeah. So the viewer, we don't want Vert Manager. We want the Vert Viewer. All right, so, so that's the 64 11. version of that because. Um, all right, installing this. If the stream crashes, we'll, we'll call it a day. But uh, if the stream doesn't crash, I'd like to see this through. So when, when, it, when you install it, it looks like nothing's happened because it, it's a command line tool. All right, so just for the. All right, here we go. Uh, I think that's it. I think it just installed. Okay, so now um, we need to go if you open up your file manager a moment, please. On my main PC? On, on, on the main PC that's hosting, you know, um, that's got the Unraid window on. So go to um, just your C drive. Mm -hmm. um, and then program files, yep. And, uh, and then we should see Vert Viewer there somewhere. And then open up a command window. How do you do that? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, hold on. It didn't drag over. Okay. And then just type CD to change directory and then drag the bin file in there, that, that bin folder. And then we should better get into the right directory then. Oh, but that uh, I've never. That's weird. Well, no big deal. Oh, it's fat. Um, up with an eye. Ah, ha ha. In the bin folder, we right? Should have vert, we should have, yeah, and then in the, there should be vertviewer.exe in there. Yep. Okay, so, so just type vertviewer.exe and then space spice. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, sorry. You have, you have to put a little bit extra on the end there. So, in, oh. Spice. Um, then colon forward slash forward slash. And then the IP address of what the Unraid server is. Uh, I got no clue. Can we find out right here? Yeah, go to, go to settings. 
and also our Windows 98 isn't running, so we'll just get the command ready. <laughs> Otherwise, it would be an epic fail. So click on um, Network Settings. And um, we should see, yeah. Um, so it says 170. 4.170. Right? And then a colon. And then I think 59.02, but don't, don't hit enter yet. Okay. And then let's go back to the VM template. Um, so the VM's not running at the moment. And we change the, and click on edit. And then scrolling down a little bit further, you'll see, there we are, up, up a tiny bit. Um, there. So VNC console protocol, it's on VNC at the moment. So if you change that to SPICE, and then click apply, or update. And then if you want to run my container again, just to fix the, um, just to fix the XML, okay. Just start, right? Um, yeah, just start will be fine. You don't really need to, um, because we're going to use. Ah, oh. so it looks like the spice port is five nine zero one on this one. So just change change the two to a one on that command. Hit enter. Hopefully, it should go in. Okay, that's um. Try five nine zero two. Actually, sorry. Mm -hmm. Sorry, can you can you close that, Bob? And just um just open up the kind of spice web window, which which won't support sound, but just right here. Yeah, and let's just see kind of what it says there. Um, grabbing my other uh, keyboard to log in. So at, at the top there, if you click on the spice in the top left. So it is 5901. So if you stop the connection, maybe because it was kind of connected with that. Um, Okay, we're at least uh, to the web window now, or to the to the main. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, this isn't the actual client. This is the web client. Sorry, just just um, bear with me one moment. What what was the IP address of your server? One seventy one nine two one six eight four one seventy. Uh, does this Windows ninety eight machine get its own IP address as well? It does, but that it won't be running a, a Spice server on the actual on the actual. Um, it's command in Windows ninety eight. Uh -huh. Did IP config exist back then? <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it used to, didn't it? Yeah, I just, I've been doing this so long, I don't even remember. So this IP address is 228 if we needed it. Right, I'm just popping into the into the Discord chat, Bob. Okay. What I think should be put in... So uh, disconnect uh, that window. Yeah, so and disconnect that here. and then pop that in. That should work. I don't know why. OK, so that would actually be remote dash viewer, not vert viewer. OK. Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm really sorry about that, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, that's probably why it didn't work. Nice. And it's either 5902 or 01, I'm not sure. Okay. Just try it. Try, oh, oh, it's there, is it? That's it. Okay, so Spice is meant to support sound, but whether it will or not is another thing. Okay, my mouse is stuck in this virtual machine window now, though. <laughs> um, oh, dear. Uh, well, your guess is as good as mine for this, Bob. Um, escape or something, maybe? Nope. Shift F12 to release pointer. All right. So, uh, what what I noticed with Spice as well is if you if you actually run Doom ninety five, the graphics is much worse. I noticed it was much more juddery for some reason. But Doom should have us some sound, shouldn't it? Nothing. Well, let's just try mm -hmm. it. I'm wondering, you know, um, I can't remember Windows 98 much. Is there anything else that needs to be configured with a sound card in Windows to make sound work? Could it be the configuration is wrong? Could very well be. Anybody in the chat? Uh, well, Anyone, any Windows experts? That could help. Because I just installed, you know, the um, Sound Blaster drivers with the emulated Sound Blaster card. It seemed like it installed and I just left it because I can never test to hear the sound. So possibly it could be something wrong with that, maybe. Or maybe there's better drivers. We should see the sound there. So, it, you know, it looks like it's installed. I wonder if we can uninstall it and reinstall it, maybe. Probably messing with that. No. I'll try and work on that in the future. See if I can get some sound coming out through Spice. So, I mean, you, I think that this was actually a pretty helpful stream uh, and, and probably something that is a good bouncing off point because essentially... You know, what, what we ended up showing of installing your, um, you know, your Windows 98 thing, that's kind of like as easy as it gets. Install yours, mm -hmm. remember to go back into the Docker if you change the XML file. That's, you know, just getting 98 running, you've made it so easy for everybody. It's really everything else that's going to be the hard part. The sound as we're seeing now passing through hardware. So... I think, uh, you know, I, I'm glad we're doing this, and I, I hope we could do a follow-up when I get some hardware in uh, so that we could actually do oh. all these pass-through things just because that's going to be the hard part for people, not setting up the thing that you've built. Uh, yeah. Check in yeah, sound sure. in the control panel to see what happens. Well, I guess I'd have to reboot now, right? Yeah, I think you know you've you've removed the actual um the sound driver. It would actually probably be faster to uh just delete and reinstall Windows ninety eight than it would to try to reinstall the sound blaster, right? <laughs> Pro probably yes, yeah.
as well um if you have a look when it reboots as well in the d drive i might have actually left the sound blaster um drivers in there um deliberately or, or i might not have done as well <laughs> Give it a moment for it to boot, and then we'll see. Damn it. Damn trapping on the mouse. All right. No, it was just the Windows 98 folder. No, yeah, it looks like I didn't put it in there. I'll make an update to it and put put the um put the drivers in there for Sound Blaster because when people want to pass through a real Sound Blaster, it'd be useful to have the drivers already present. Yeah. All right. Well, just very very quickly then, um, I'm going to uh, delete this VM and reinstall it and just try that one more time. But I mean, you did the same thing yesterday, right? Yeah, I didn't have much time to look at it. Um, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm kind of wondering if um, it is just the configuration of the Sound Blaster drivers in the VM. Um, I need to try using, I haven't used Spice very often in VMs. So I will co probably kind of try using Spice with Windows with Windows 7 or, or something more new just to test that, that the sound redirection does work correctly um, before trying to spend too much time on Windows, you know, because if it just doesn't work anyway for some reason. Because the USB keyboard and mouse pass-through, that, I mean, that alone could be enough for most people. Yeah. So if you, do, if you don't mind not having sound, then, you know, you can play your Windows 98 games okay. And when I download or deleted them, I deleted it from VM and in the uh, Docker, and that's all I needed to do, right? Just delete them in those two places. Yeah, you didn't really need to delete the Docker, to be honest. Um, that that would just pull down the newer newer version because it because it realized you already had it before, so it didn't bother just downloading it again. And yours was a bit of an older version. Done. I'll just make sure that it's uh actually we could just stop it because uh, we we need we need to stop for spice yeah um, yeah so by stop. default it's you're gonna have to force stop because I don't think Windows ninety eight takes those type of commands through. Oh, make sure you click the other one as well. I think you have to click t oh, both select of those. select and optional. Buttons. You're right. Update, and then go into the Docker. Run your in a box. VMs. Start. And let me bring up that. So what key command is it? Alt and what? Shift what? F12 to get out from under there. Shift F12, right. And this is probably going to make me reinstall the. Um, oh yeah, you have. You're gonna have to reinstall. Keyboard and mouse, the, which um... is fine. That's <laughs> that's the one where it's data Windows ninety eight. Gotcha.
Yeah, this version of Windows 98 as well has got every single known patch to Windows 98 that there is. I used to be involved in a lot of That's... that stuff, both professionally and for a uh, just for, as a hobby. And I I really kept up with XP, and then I really kept up with 7, and then I kind of lost track of that stuff. And when I went back to uh, to do it again recently, it was a nightmare. And some of the stuff that I used to do for Seven just crashes the OS now. It was uh, it was annoying and strange. Right. We get that working. So what does it look like on what's it look like on the CRT, Bob? Looks like Windows 98. Looks, looks good. Yeah, looks really good. Looks like it looks like it should have always looked. So it says it's playing the sound, but there's no sound. So let me. Oh no, where's that? I'm trying to get the uh, the VM. Maybe Drift F12. I'm trying to find a way to get the VM not out of full screen so I can go into the settings. Son of a bitch. Oh boy. Try and Alt F4. I'm try I guess I'm just gonna have to reboot this thing and leave it in windowed mode because maybe there's some settings in uh in Spice. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay. Uh, I would have to restart this. Seems to be an awesome thunderstorm building right outside. So if uh, I lose power, we'll just call. We'll just call <laughs> the stream. All right. We've had about two or three days of constant rain over here. It's finally cleared up today. There's nothing about audio or video here. No. What was under guest details? As a matter of interest. Nothing much. Yeah, that's too bad. Um, so I guess we got no audio for now. But that's still a pretty big deal that we've come this far. So I'm going to let, I guess we should just kind of call it a day for this one. Yeah. Uh, I actually am kind of curious, though. Let me, um, hold on. Let's just, before we go, just for nostalgia's sake. <laughs> and the keyboard's actually not working in DOS mode because you need a oh, USB no. <laughs> driver. That is we, pretty funny. We, we could probably make it work if we used um, a different type of pass through. That is pretty funny. Well, not needed. I think this is going to accomplish absolutely everything that we needed it to do, uh, except audio. So I'm going to buy the stuff. Uh, 
that you had recommended. And oh. do you have a, a case that you recommend as well? Um, because you just showed the that case awesome I little bought, case there. The case I bought, um, this one, it was from AliExpress, and it was just some random kind of build your own external GPU case, and I thought I'd just try and fit it in there, really. But maybe, um, do you have a 3D printer, Bob? No, it's a rabbit hole I decided I definitely didn't want to go down until I had to, because I knew I would just spend all my money on it. <laughs> in all my time so yeah, may, maybe someone in you know who's watching the stream might be um good at designing stuff in 3d print and could actually make could actually make a proper case that these things would fit in would be pretty cool yeah i mean and then I'm we, very could, lucky we could to be 3d print them of the 3d printing badasses like greg from laser bear todd from retro frog and uh, there's a couple of other oh, people cool. jumping on the scene that are are just as talented so that, that's definitely mm. something. Because, you know, even if you don't have a 3D printer, there's places I think you can send off what you want them to print, and they'll print it for you and send it to you. Yeah. Um, so I'll look into the things that you had showed here. Let me... Um, here, let me... Uh, let's just go over this. I'll put links in the description for people who want to um, to check this stuff out themselves. But... Right here, so this is the PCI to, uh, adapter. This says PCI-E. Yeah. Uh, it's actually just a PCI slot. Yeah, so just the dual PCI slots allowing you to put a graphics card and a sound card. And that's a SATA cable, and that's a USB port. Yeah, I, I, I don't use the SATA cable, to be honest. Um, it just gives it extra power, but most devices don't really need it. And then the the USB just plugs into a little. If you click on one of those other pictures, Bob, um, on the left there, sort of down second from the bottom, that's the thing that plugs into the motherboard. So the USB the cable, cable isn't there. actually USB; it's just a cable used to. No, it's a, it's just jo it's just joining the stuff together. There is another version of this um, where it has. A port on the back of the card on the back of the kind of plate so you don't have to actually have the cable inside the pc oh. so you know um this is just the first one i found but there are other ones that have one port at the back and one at the front and you put a jumper the width for whether you want it to plug in the back of the um, card so you can plug it in and out the pc but obviously you wouldn't plug it in while the pc is on yeah, we should spend like a minute looking for that one because I want to recommend the, the most streamlined version. And is this a SATA power port on there? Yes. Yeah, so you have so to power it separately as well? No, I, I don't power mine. It, it will just power off the motherboard. Um, I don't bother, to be honest, with, um, with the SATA power. Okay. I've not, I've not found a need that I've had to do that as yet. Um, the, if you think like... Um, the PCIe slot will power will kind of give out what seventy watts or something. I think it will do. Okay. And then Maybe there's some things that need a different voltage. Possibly, I don't know. And then it's basically just any graphics card that's PCI based that has Windows ninety eight drivers in it or, or yeah. available for. Like, it. Uh, a really, if you want a really easy one that will have the drivers available in Windows 98 without having to install anything, is a Cirrus Logic graphics card. Okay. Um, but when you buy them, you'll often find some of them will have... Um, if you bring up a picture of one, Bob, of, of the one I sent in the chat to you the other day, um, of the Cirrus, Cirrus Logic one, you can see... See those little things on the right where there's nothing inside them. You can put memory chips in there and increase the memory on the. Um, oh wow! On the graphics card, like the two chips at the top are both memory chips, mm -hmm. and so some of the cards you'll find have actually got chips inside of there that are already populated. I'm not sure. I think it's either kind of how that is. I think it's two megs of RAM, and if the other others were populated, it would have four megs of RAM. That's so, interesting. Um, that's just something to look out for when you're looking on eBay for an old card. If it's got those populated, you've got a better deal. Okay. 
Um, well, I'll look into all of that stuff with you. I'll have that uh, ordered. Um, I'll look into cases. Maybe there's maybe there's one enclosed device already that just has the converter in a case that you can just buy like that. And I'd yeah, also like to good. talk to Karapi to see if the Sound Blaster cards, um, the Sound Blaster compatible cards that he has, uh, will work with this. So that there's. There's certainly a few pieces of hardware we could buy, but I'm going to do all this together, and then let's do it. If you don't mind, let's do a follow-up stream. Vanessa, oh, sure. I was just about to message you. I was literally just opening Discord to message you uh, to see um, if you had any external stuff like this or if you had one of these Cirrus Logic uh, video cards I could buy off you or a Sound Blaster. I'd rather give the money to friends than an eBay stranger, but uh, yeah. Okay, well... Um, <laughs> so yeah, this was awesome. This was a great start. I'm going to edit the description of this just to do the basic summary of, you know, this was a very long stream to get just to make all the mistakes that everybody else might run into. And hopefully we could get some software, uh, some software pass through for audio. But if not having the audio and video externally like that means for pretty much a zero lag solution. So that's going to be pretty cool. What do yeah, you think about sure. latency when you pass the USB keyboard and mouse through the way we did without passing the hardware through? Do you think there's latency added to that, or do you think that just goes directly in, same as normal? I, I, just, I, just don't, I just don't think you'll notice it at all. Makes mm. sense. All right. Well, this was absolutely awesome. Thank you, Ed. I really appreciate your help. Uh, thanks to everybody in the chat, of course, for, for joining us on these crazy journeys. And this will be part one of pro probably part or a two-part series. I think the next part will just be getting the hardware in and then just passing it through and going from there. I think that would be pretty neat. Cool. I can't wait. Awesome. Thanks again, Ed. You're very welcome. Thanks very much, guys. Catch you again.